Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what we have here. In this box, we have a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Go KWH or Go Kilowatt Hour, either way. But we're going to open up this package today and see what this battery is all about. Okay, I did undo the top already, and inside you can see there is a user manual. Uh, right out front. Uh, there's several kinds of batteries right here. We're looking at this smaller one, which is the 100 uh, amp hour unit. And right off the bat, you can tell that it's really well packed. And what we have here, these look like the M8 bolts that go up on top. And then lifting off this little foam piece here, this is the battery. So I'm gonna try to get this thing out of here. Uh, first, let's get it out of the box. And so you can pretty much see that it is totally encased in foam. It, it's not even uh, separate pieces. It is basically in here. So I might have to break this foam out. I'll see if I can get this thing out of here without destroying the foam. And no, I wasn't. I pretty much had to tear this foam apart. So uh, getting it out of the little plastic here. And then we have some plastic here on top. That this is peeled away. And so this is the battery and you can see right here, it actually has an LCD display, which you can actually uh, see the current voltage and current usage. And then the terminals themselves have these little plastic caps on here. So uh, we'll get the M8 bolts in here. And so the instruction manual here does show you how to install these bolts with the terminals. So uh, we'll go ahead and follow the instructions for that. And so I went ahead and put on the bolts, as you can see here, for the terminals. And I, I have to say that this is actually a very nice looking battery. I do really like the yellow here. Uh, I like the little sun kind of showing that solar uh, motif right there. And you can see everything's easily, you can read it very easily. 12.8 volts, the 100 uh, amp hour here, the 1280 watt hour and lithium iron phosphate and everything is really nice you also have a little qr code here you can take a picture of this and uh, this will actually take you to their website so you could get more information about this battery and other products that they sell i think the back end here is basically identical so that's fine so let's go ahead and look at the lcd display here uh, I did this is the power button. This is the set button here I think if I just hit the power button it should turn on and yes, it does It is actually displaying um, it looks like the overhead light is washing it out a bit But let's turn off the light and see if you could see it a little bit better uh, There you go, and it is 13.2 volts at 73% and you can kind of see a battery indicator a bar at the bottom there. And so it looks like the first thing I need to do is go ahead and charge that, uh, charge the battery. And so I will go ahead and do that and I will be back once it's fully charged. Okay, I got the battery charged up. Let's see, it does look like it's displaying full right there saying 13.9 volts. Let's go ahead and test it with the multimeter to double check that. Okay, let's go ahead and test it with my multimeter. I'm set at DC, good. We'll hit the terminals here. And it's giving me 13.85 volts. Let's go ahead and retest this. And this is saying 13.8. So it's pretty accurate in terms of the LCD display. So in addition to displaying the voltage and the current uh, charge indicator here, the LCD display also has six different modes where if, let's say, hit the power, and if you hit the set button for two seconds, it'll display the first uh, mode, which is the lead acid battery mode, uh, 1-P. And you'll notice a little blinking uh, double zeros here. You can select the voltage uh, with regards to 12, uh, 24, 84, et cetera. And that's related, I believe, to the series of how you ha have your system set up if you have multiple batteries. 
And so if you hit it again, you'll get into the second mode, which is the ternary uh, lithium battery mode. And it has a number of string settings as well. If you hit the power button, you can uh, go through that those. And then the next mode is for the lithium iron uh, phosphate uh, selection. Again, there's a number of strings associated with that. And then the next mode is basically you could designate uh, a custom high and low voltage setting. Uh, the first one is basically the low uh, voltage setting and then the second uh, set of zeros is the saturation. Now the next mode is for the backlights, uh, the backlight uh, setting. So the display backlight for this, you can uh, designate it as on or off, etc. And then the last mode is basically a setting for a low voltage alarm that you can actually set for this. But for now, I'm just gonna keep everything in default settings. So if you hit uh, the set for two seconds, you will get to the back to the main display. Now it's my understanding that the battery actually consists of a series of blade pouch cells. It also has internal electronics uh, for the battery management system, which is crucial for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the case itself is rated as IP65, which is basically it protects the internals from dust. And also it's generally waterproof to very shallow depths of maybe up to a meter. Um, I can, you can open up the case, but I don't want to do that because it will basically disrupt the, the waterproof seal. And I don't want to do that. Now, literature does say that this battery is good for well over 4,000 charging cycles. Uh, that's largely due to, uh, I guess, the battery management system helps control uh, any damage associated with uh, the charging cycles. And so um, they're saying that this could last you for ten, uh, maybe eight to 10 years, depending on how often you charge it. So I don't pretend to be a battery expert. I don't have a solar array on top of my house and I don't own an RV, which requires a deep cycle battery, but I do have periodic use for portable power supplies. I do have a number of pinball and arcade games. I sometimes transport those to locations where power is not readily available. And so I do have use for this. So I don't have any fancy equipment where I could adequately test this uh, battery, let's say uh, measuring voltage drops over time, etc. But I do own a portable heater, a oil heater, and I have an inverter and some multimeters. So we're going to test this using a single 1500 watt oil heater and see what we get. See if it actually lives up to the 100 amp hour rating. Okay, so this is my setup. I have the 1500 watt oil heater right here, uh, currently off. It does have three settings, uh, low, medium, high, and I will probably not stick it on the high because unfortunately my inverter is only a 1000 watt uh, pure sign inverter. So unfortunately I have some uh, equipment uh, limitations here but I also plugged the inverter into a old time flip clock currently set to 12 o'clock. So when the power is turned on in the inverter, the clock should start running and should continue to run until the inverter finally kicks off because of low voltage on the, uh, in the battery. So lithium iron phosphate batteries do generally keep a fairly constant voltage through un until they essentially uh, lose their charge at the very end rapidly. And so uh, the battery should probably keep a fairly constant voltage until the inverter finally kicks off because of the sudden voltage drop in the battery. So let's go ahead and start the test. We will start by turning on the inverter. So the inverter's on. And we will just put it on low for now. Let's go ahead and test what kind of amperage we're getting out of this thing. All right, currently it's pulling 44.9 amps, is that correct? Okay, so let's put it on medium level. And now it's pulling 69.2 amps. 
and it looks like the inverter is already at 829 watts. So we'll keep it at the medium setting of the heater. Okay, so 40 minutes into the test. What's our wattage? We're, the wattage is about, um, still about 827 watts. Uh, let's see what our little display says here. 12.8 volts. And just to double check things, so uh, let's see, what did I say? Uh, 827 watts divided by um, 12.8 volts, that's 64 amps. And then checking it with our clamp meter here, we're getting about, again, 70 amps. So that's good enough for government work, so that's close enough. So everything seems to be calcing out all right so far. So let's say at a constant draw of about 70 amps, it is a 100 amp hour battery. So this battery hopefully should last for about 1.4, 1.45 hours. So if we start at 12 o'clock, maybe around 1.30, um, it should end if uh, the battery lives up to its promise of 100 amp hours. We will see. Okay, so the inverter has stopped. The test has ended and the time is 1.26. So it's just under an hour and a half. And let's see what our display says. It says it's at 25% charge and currently it's at 11.1 volts. Okay, so let's assume an average draw of 70 amps throughout the test. We'll multiply that by the time, which in hours is 1.43 equals 100.1 amps. You can't get any closer than that. So this battery lived up to its 100 amp hour name. And there you go. That is the 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, uh, deep cycle lithium iron phosphate battery from Go Kilowatt Hour. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen, and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.